What is good guys, it is Reed and welcome back to an awesome video. Today we have something I call the buckle control. This is a control I've done for a long time, something I came up with a long time ago. I don't use it a ton these days, just because I have other controls that I prefer at the moment, but it's a fun control, it's really easy, it's something a little bit different, deceptive, it's just, it's, it's simple. You just have a card selected, you close the spread, and the card is on top. Really, like, it's as simple as that. It's great, uh, the angles are pretty good on it, and it's something that was just, just fun to play with. It's got a little finicky aspect to it, but it's still pretty easy, but it's just, it's a fun one to fiddle with, and I'm sure some of you guys will enjoy using it. So, let's not spend too much time, I just wanna thank all the new subs, we're so close to two UK and uh, you know that's a huge milestone I can't wait to get there make sure you drop a like if you like this video the sleight of hand tutorials are a lot of fun and uh, yeah let's not waste any more time let's get right to the buckle control all right guys let me show you a quick demo on the buckle control so I'll spread through they can touch any card they'd like let's say they touch this one right here the six of hearts and we'll leave it right there in the middle of the deck you can see it be closed into the middle and if I just wave my hand over top of the cards one card comes right back to the top. So for some exposure on the buckle control, we'll have any card freely selected. Let's say this one right here, the eight of spades. We'll leave that right there. And now we will leave the eight of spades in the middle of the deck. And you can see it in the middle as I close up and it arrives on top. All right, time for the breakdown. So the buckle control is a cool little move. It's quick, easy, knacky, um, but not, uh, not much slight involved. It's just a little bit of a buckle with the pinky that's pretty easy to do and you control the card to the top. So what you do is you spread through and you want to get a pretty even spread. You don't want really a circular spread. You want a nice square spread and you want it to be spread out. You don't really want it to be like a big clump. Like you see how there's a big chunk of, and then uh, you know a small spread. If you can have it fairly evenly spread out so it's you know even all the way across, it's gonna make your life a bit easier. So you spread through, and they're gonna to touch a card. Now you're gonna look away as you push over that top card that they selected and show it to them just like that. As you pull back, you're just getting a pinky break, right? Really easy, you pull back and get a pinky break above that card. Now, there's a few things to keep in mind. You wanna have a reason to take a beat like this, where, so where before you go right back to assembling the deck. And I'll give you some justifications for that in a second. You also, you know, it helps if you're just slightly tilted this way. It works straight on, but I like just to be slightly tilted this way, just because it helps hide when you do the pull down. Again, it is hidden from the beginning, but you can see there's a bit of movement and you can almost tell that that's just a single card up there like that. So if you just tilt a little bit to the side, it helps cover that. So again, when you do that, you can either control that through having the spectator be over here while you show them the card and come back, or literally just be, you know, you can show the spectator over here and as you come back down, you just make a slight adjustment and you can talk to someone over here. There's a lot of justifications. This control definitely has a bit of a rhythm to it, which is also important as well. So you spread through, get that even spread, they stop here and you go like this. Now you come back down, you say, all right, we'll leave your card right there and I just kind of gesture over. Now what's happening for the rhythm is you're coming together. As you come together, you're pulling down very aggressively and this is all just sliding in here, but you do that with this finger on the front it's gonna pull, keep that hidden. And all this is coming up out of view so they can't tell that that's going on top. But it's very quick and it just comes up and then back down once everything's inside. First things first, you know, you've shown the card, you pulled it back, you have your break. Why do we stop here like this? Well, you just say, look, that's your card there, we'll leave it there. And you, you can just gesture and then come back apart. You do wanna be apart as you come together. You don't wanna be close because if the deck's already over top, then it makes sense. So if you're apart, as you bring your hands together, that's when you can feed them underneath. So instead of being close, you'd be a bit further apart. So I show, I come back down, I say, all right, we'll leave your card right there. And I just gesture and come apart and we'll leave it in the middle of the deck like that. And that's where I execute the control, okay? So I show and I say, all right, we'll leave your card right here and we'll lose it somewhere in the middle of the deck. And that's, that's typically the pattern I use. So boom, I come through. All right, that's your card, remember that. We'll leave your card right there, and now we'll lose it in the middle of the deck, just like that, and it's on top. So, what's happening there? As I have my break, I gesture, I say, we'll leave your card right there, and now I come apart, right? So my hands are apart, because remember, if they're too close, then if it's on top, you know, you can't just 
scoop it underneath so you want to be apart so as you come together what you're going to do is you're going to use this pinky and you're just going to pull down you can even use the ring finger a bit as hard as you can and you should be able to get hmm, about an inch open about an inch from the top here to the bottom there at this bottom back edge here now if you did this with this in index finger curled you're going to get this big break in the front so you need to have the index finger holding this top card down like this this is without me pulling down this is with me pulling down so the only thing you see different is that pinky movement so now if you turn it like this you really can't tell the difference now none of this happens and you do want to kind of keep this break concealed but none of this is going to happen until you start to bring the hands together so it's all hidden by this rhythmic sort of closing of the hands so as you do this you bring the hands together as you're doing this the first thing is to pull down and then it's to start to tilt up and all you need to do is get to the point where these are directly at the eye line because now they can't tell really where those cards are going right so you come like this boom and you're just feeding everything in and using this hand to push it underneath and this thumb to pull and then you come on top and square everything up so that's sort of the easy way right so it's like this you come through and as you pull down and tilt up but i'll show you exposed you come underneath and then these fingers are going to come from underneath to the side as you push everything in and then the thumb comes on top and squares everything while these fingers jut to the front to square the rest of the deck like that so it's really just about getting the deck square as quick as possible. So it's kind of like this and boom, right? So again, you're coming in. These fingers come from underneath to the side to push and the thumb comes over top and you square really quickly. So at speed exposed, it's just kind of like this and then I square. So it happens really quickly. You just want to have that, that card squared on top before you come into view. You don't want it kind of off and it looks like something was up with that top card so another tip here is you don't want to come in and put these cards in um, like perfectly straight on you want to be back a little bit as you come in because if you go straight you have a big gap here and they'll all fit there but they'll, they'll, it might tend to get caught at the front and what's gonna happen is it'll get caught and then some cards will end up over top or it'll just they'll hit each other and they, the spread won't close so if you come back slightly further and now you have this big gap to go in you're good that's another reason why you want this to be spread thin because if there's a big chunk at the end here as you're coming and you get to the end there's a high chance that you'll just hit this right and the more you pull down and the better you get you can you know still get that big chunk in there but it definitely helps if you're spread thin so you show come down and now as you close you pull boom everything's out of view and you instantly come back into view as you square and the control has already been done now one thing that can help too if you're finding trouble with the buckling motion once you have your pinky break um, sometimes that can actually be difficult and if you have a bit of an upwards curve in your deck that's probably why because you have to fight against that sort of curve so if you just give the deck a little bit of this, a little downwards curve before you actually start the control, now when you come here and you go for your buckle, it's already wanting to go down that way and this becomes much easier. So that's a nice little tip. So in terms of some subtleties, the angle is obviously really important and that's just about finding the right angle so that just as you're coming close, you can pull and tilt up so that they can't see that these cards are not going on top. And then the second you get everything starting to square, you just come back down so the top's in view again. The kind of goal here is to make them feel like the deck was never really out of view, right? The deck, for the whole time, they could see that their card went right into the middle, and it's sort of an optical illusion, right? They would never expect that these are gonna go underneath. When they see this, they're just assuming that that all went on top of their card, right? So that's kind of the idea here. The angle is important, but you just need to tilt a little bit just so you're at the eye line and you get the top of the deck out of view and that's really it. Now a nice other subtlety is a little bit more of an advanced variation of this that utilizes an out jog of the whole top pack. So what you do is uh, as you spread and you come down and you get your break, you're going to feed these to the back, which I already said is helpful, so this is already good. And instead of as you close and you come and you square everything up, what you're going to do is you're going to leave them back jogged like that. Okay, so. You come and you leave them back jogged and now this thumb on top here is going to kick this card back on top just as you come into view and now you have this step and it feels like that's their card because if you think about it it just feels like you did this and then you're showing them their card for one last moment as you push it in so that has another nice element to the optical illusion you show them the card come down and as you close 
you pull back and then come back into view and you say you can see your card there as I close it into the middle of the deck, yet it is on top. So at speed, that sort of looks like this. Come down, this is your card here. We'll leave it into the middle of the deck and you can see that as I close it into the middle of the deck, yet it's on top. So again, for that, it's the exact same thing, but instead when you square, you're gonna just keep these all back jogged, right? And again, I already said it's easier to do this back jog because there's a bigger gap. So normally you would do that and then square everything. But if you do that, instead of squaring, you pull this card back with your thumb. And you can see it's, it's not that difficult to do, but it is a bit more advanced. You do this and you pull the card back and you can even have this thumb help on top. And that's all just slightly out of view, right? That's all with your, your little tilt there. So boom, boom, and you do your little tilt. What's happening on top is like this. And now as I come back into view, I can just gesture and say you can see your card there as I close it into the middle. And you just lightly gesture at it, implying that that's their card. So at speed from the exposed view, it's just kind of like this. And you tap like this, and you close it, and the card's on top. Now in terms of body language for this move, you just want to be smooth, natural, um, and, and make it, you know, feel laid back. Don't draw any attention to this. It's just the selection. So you just come like this. Boom, 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 right, close it up like that. And, and that's why it's good to have the patter down and the rhythm sort of smooth and then memorized so that it's just really smooth. So you just say, look, remember that card, we'll leave it right there, I'll lose it in the middle of the deck and you can see it go into the middle. And it's just, you know, one smooth, you have that patter down, see your card, remember that, we'll leave it there and we'll lose it into the middle of the deck. You can see it go into the middle just like that and we have the control. So it's just about being smooth and having a nice rhythm. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. That is the buckle control, a control I've had with me for a long time, served me very well. It's a fun control, it's nice. It's quite fun to work on actually, but uh, I like it. It looks nice, it's visually pretty, pretty cool, little optical illusion going on. So hope you guys enjoyed that control. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. If you need any help with this control or any other move, uh, mentalism or performance or anything you want, uh, send me an email or slights at gmail.com and we can get a lesson going. But for now, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the live streams I got coming up or any of the new videos. And with all that said, guys, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.